All right, it's time to continue on with some more Mass Effect of Summer. Last game, uh, we were made a Spectre, and we were given command of the Normandy. And now, I've we're off to head to our mission. Humans are angry at the Quarians after the attack on Eden Prime. After all, you created the Geth. The Geth killed billions and forced us from our homeworld. Most Quarians believe we have paid properly for our mistake. Hopefully, having you with us fighting Saren will change people's minds. This is a recap here. I've got here. big news for you, Shepard. Captain Anderson is stepping down as commanding officer of the Normandy. The ship is yours now. She's quick and quiet, and you know the crew. Perfect ship for a Spectre. Treat her well, Commander. This isn't right. The Normandy belongs to you. And like I said you before, once again, uh, I want to. Uh, Spectre can't answer to anyone. I want to do the different council. dialogues. And it's time for me to step down. What kind of leads do we have? Saren's gone. Don't even try to find him. But we know what he's after. The conflict. He's got us get scouring the traverse looking for clues. We had reports of Geth in the Pharaoh system shortly before our colony there dropped out of contact, and there have been sightings around Noveria. Find out what Saren was after on Pharos and Noveria. Maybe you can figure out where the conduit is before he does. The Reapers are the real threat. I'm with the Council on this one, Shepard. I'm not sure they even exist. But if they do exist, the conduit's the key to bringing them back. Stop Saren from getting the conduit, and we stop the Reapers from returning. I'll stop him. We have one more lead. Matriarch Benezia, the other voice on that recording. She has a daughter, a scientist who specializes in the Protheans. We don't know if she's involved, but it might be a good idea to try and find her. See what she knows. Her name's Liara, Dr. Liara Tassoni. We have reports she was exploring an archaeological dig on one of the uncharted worlds in the Artemis Tau Cluster. Sounds like we should head for the Artemis Tau Cluster. It's your decision, Commander. You're a Spectre now. You don't answer to us. But your actions still reflect on humanity as a whole. You make a mess and I get stuck cleaning it up. I'll try not to make things any harder on you, Ambassador. Glad to hear it, Commander. Remember, you were a human long before you were a Spectre. I have a meeting to get to. Captain Anderson can answer any questions you might have. Yes, Commander. What do you know about the Artemis Tau Cluster? Not much. I've never been there myself. A handful of systems with a few small, uncharted worlds, but no real colonies. Might not be easy finding Dr. Tassoni out there. My advice is to look for the world with the Prothean ruins. Any extra intel you can give me on our colony at Pharos? The entire planet used to be one giant Prothean city. Mostly ruins now. But some of the infrastructure is still intact. The colony tried to build on what the Protheans left behind. We lost all contact with them when the Geth attacked. What can you tell me about Novaria? Novaria's trouble. Always has been. The whole planet's basically a center for corporations to conduct illegal research. Watch your back there, Shepard. Spectres are about the only form of citadel authority Novaria respects. But they aren't popular. I should go. I'll be here if you need anything. All right, so so we got a couple of missions here. Take care of now. Let's head aboard the Normandy. Stand by, shore party. Decontamination in progress. I heard what happened to Captain Anderson. Survives a hundred battles and then gets taken down by backroom politics. Just watch your back, Commander. If things go bad on this mission, you're next on their chopping block. Saren's out there somewhere, and we're gonna find him. Everyone on this ship's behind you, Commander, 100%. Intercom's open. You got anything you wanna say to the crew? Now's the time. This is Commander Shepard speaking. We have our orders. Find Saren before he finds the conduit. I won't lie to you, crew. This mission isn't going to be easy. Our enemy knows we're coming. 
Wherever he searches for the conduit, we'll be there. We will hunt him to the very ends of the galaxy and bring him down. Humanity needs to do this. Not just for our own sake, but for the sake of every other species in Citadel space. Saren must be stopped. And I promise you all, we will stop him. Well said, Commander. Captain will be proud. The Captain gave up everything so I could have this chance. We can't fail. Yes, sir. Everyone's all like, <laughs> beautiful. If anyone has to take over for Captain Anderson, I'm glad it's you. I'm not sure about having non-humans on our ship, though. Speak freely, Presley. I want to know if you have a problem with non-humans. It's not that, Commander. Humanity has always handled its own problems. Saren attacked one of our colonies. We should be the ones to stop him. We don't need their help. Some people think asking for help is a sign of weakness. That's just being stupid and stubborn. No matter how strong you are, allies can make you stronger. I guess so. Maybe I'm just stuck in the old ways of thinking. But don't worry, Commander. This won't be a problem. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. Found some more codex. Oh, there's more. Pharos is a habitable world in the Attican Beta Cluster. Right, we'll learn more when we get there. Oh, we got some more. The Citadel is an ancient deep... Citadel space is an unofficial term referring to any region of... All right, let's just get going here. Supposedly constructed by the long extinct Perothians, this colossal deep space station serves as the capital of the Citadel Council. Gravity is simulated to rotation, and is a comfortable 1.02 standard G's on the wards and a light 0.3 standard G's on the Presidium wing. Total length open 44.7 kilometers, diameter open 12.8 kilometers, population 13.2 million, not including keepers, and gross weight 7.11 billion metric tons. Wow. Alright. Citadel. Um, let's see here. So let's start. Uh, let's start. Uh, okay, maybe I gotta talk to Joker. Oh, here we go. Nebulae. There we go. Um, hang on a minute. I want to take a look at something. Hawking at a cluster should be our first stop. Message coming in, Commander. Big surprise, the Alliance needs you again. Shepard, this is Admiral Hackett with Alliance Command. We've got a mission for you. An Alliance officer named Major Kyle has set up a small compound in the Hulking Eta Cluster. He's attracted a number of followers. 
mostly biotics. He's become an outspoken critic of the Alliance, and we believe he's mentally unstable. This could be trouble, Shepard. I'll look into it. Three days ago, we sent two Alliance representatives to meet with him at his compound. They've disappeared. We believe Kyle and his followers killed them. That compound is a cult, Shepard. They call him Father Kyle now. He set himself up as some kind of religious leader. You said his followers were biotics? Yes. Major Kyle never showed any biotic tendencies himself, though. I think he's just latched onto a group he identifies with. Many biotics feel marginalized or ostracized by society. Kyle probably sees them as victims who need his protection. And they see him as someone who will fight for them. Unfortunately, he's convinced them that the Alliance is somehow responsible for all their problems. We can't let him go on like this. What were those Alliance representatives going to talk to Major Kyle about? They wanted to bring him back to an Alliance facility for treatment. Major Kyle served us faithfully for many years. We weren't going to abandon him. Given his state of mind, however, he probably saw them as a threat. We're almost certain he had his followers killed him. What else can you tell me about Major Kyle? He used to be a model soldier, but something happened to him at Torfin. Too many Alliance soldiers died under his command. Couldn't cope with the guilt. His psych evaluation showed he couldn't handle the stress of command anymore. He was given an honorable discharge in early retirement. We'd hoped he would get better in time, but we underestimated how far gone he was. Now it looks like it's too late. I'll deal with Major Kyle for you, Admiral. We don't want this to turn into a massacre, Commander. Kyle is dangerous. I trust you to use your judgment. Hack it out. Alright, um, let's see here. So where exactly is he hiding? Let's look into this a little further. Sentry system. Hmm. Yeah, but it doesn't specifically say where, though. We start here. Oh, cobalt, huh? While scanning this planet, you have detected a significant deposit of cobalt. these resources are going to do. Medallion recovered. While scanning the planet, the, the Rapto, you discover a tiny moon with some odd readings. Further scans by Chief Engineer Adams revealed a destroyed escape pod. We salvaged and recovered the components and found a League of One medallion. Okay. start here. Commander, something you need? How's the Normandy performing? Is she everything they said she'd be? She's the best ship in the fleet, if you've got a pilot who knows how to handle her. Balance isn't what you'd expect. It takes a while to get used to that oversized drive core we got stuffed in the back and her power can sneak up on you if you're not careful. The Normandy's probably too much ship for your average Alliance pilot, Commander. Lucky for you, I'm anything but average. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Looks like we got some more... Ooh. Look at that. Looks like we have... Sentry system, huh? Oh, there was actually more. The Normandy is a proto. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About the Normandy. If you played Mass Effect before, you know uh, 
You know how this all pans out. We were in the sentry system, but uh. contains plentiful deposits of heavy metals. The Alliance has opened bidding for the moon's mineral rights, but exploitation will be complicated by the system's proximity of the five kiloparsec ring around the galactic core. The ring is an area of intense far formation and too dangerous to safely travel. First up's landscape is a nightmare of jagged, overlapping ridges and geological shock zones created by some ancient disaster. This has not deterred a, a generation of illegal wildcat miners from attempting to exploit the moon's mineral riches, and unfortunately, many have lost their lives. <sighs> Orbital distance 168,500 kilometers. Orbital period 10.8 Earth days. Radius 4,113 kilometers. Daily 10.8 Earth days. Atmospheric pressure 0.1 Earth atmospheres. Surface temperature minus 73 degrees Celsius. You don't want to know how cold that is in, in a Fahrenheit. And surface gravity of 0.88 Gs. Now we're going to start here. Alright, so. This is a good place for us to get our feet wet. Oh, look at that. We got our very first vehicle. We. I don't think we have enough weapons to stop that thing, so I think we're just gonna have to pass on this. we'll get some better armor and better weapons. Then we'll take care of that creature. But for right now, let's just go over here. Commander, you're going beyond the range of the operational area. I get you. 
I get it now. I get it now. Okay, so I actually was going the right way the first time. Go we'll figure. tough to deal with, I just know it. I just don't have enough omni gels for this. Oh, what's this? I don't know if my weapon has a great function. How's that enough? That's all part of the learning process. Really? Oh my god. It's like I swear that acid just homes in on ya. Uh, take three. I don't have to take care of this big behemoth. Like I said before, I swear to god, this thing just homes in on you. Dead, so are we.
Okay, with that said, what next? better, but I'm glad it didn't go worse. As long as we're to face another one of those creatures, I don't really care what happens here. for this vehicle. Okay. as much as far as elevation goes. I wonder if this thing can actually climb a mountain. Well, that's right. Yes, it can. It seems like everything is on the other side, which means I'm going the wrong way. This way is gonna go through here and around. And we gotta go eastward then. Whee! So I gotta find the path of least resistance. That's the key to getting around. I'm also paying attention to the elevation would be nice too. Can't imagine going off-roading with this. Alright, so we made it. I swear to God, it better not be another one of those... those... things. Those thrushes, or whatever it's called. Oh, what do we have here? Looky, looky, looks like a research center. Hang on. 
very gingerly. There we go. Okay, there's some minerals right there. Great! Gold deposit. Alright, so what now? Um... I want some gold. Great. Now what? Okay, so at least we made it to our destination. That's the important thing. Oh, I get it. Okay, so like right around here. Here is perfect. Perfect. Let's head in here. Let's head in here. This is a private sanctuary. Outsiders are not welcome here. I need to talk to the man in charge. It's important. Father Kyle wants nothing more to do with the Alliance. I want this to end peacefully. If he doesn't see me, people could get hurt. We won't let you take Father Kyle away. He protects us. We need him. The Alliance wants someone to pay for those murders. Let me speak to Major Kyle, and maybe I can find some way to help you all get out of this alive. Wait. Father Kyle will speak with you. Head to the building at the far end of the compound. He'll meet you there. Alright. So we're inside. Let's go talk to Father Kyle. First, let's see if there's anything of value here. It's no use to him. I think we'll just leave everything as is. Business talking to these cultists, so. Okay, it's gotta be up this way. Garris, what are you doing over there? Jeez. What are you doing sitting around for, hmm? Garrus is stuck. Of course. Oh, where 
is he? He's gotta be at the end of the hall. Father Kyle says we biotics have to stick together. I'm gonna take a look at my journal. Oh, 12. Okay. Okay, so he is in here somewhere. There's a down, unless there's somewhere else we're not aware of. Unless he is outside. That's okay, at least we got some items. Just keep moonwalking in place. I just love finding bugs in this game. Oh, there's this too. Oh, this is another entrance. Okay. I just love it when my crew sticks together.
I know why you've come. We have no quarrel with you. Why can't you just leave us alone? What happened to those other Alliance officers? The ones who came before me? They wanted to take me away from here. They wanted me to abandon this place, turn my back on my family. They spoke blasphemy. I did what I could to make their end quick and painless. I had no other choice. It was necessary to protect my children. Only I can keep them safe. You can still get out of this alive, Major. Surrender and nobody will get hurt. I respect that you have come under a banner of peace, but I cannot do as you ask. If you take away their father, my children will be helpless. You're not leaving me much choice, Major. I speak, but you do not hear. You are like the others. A blasphemer who must die. I will destroy you! Our shields! Well, I guess I didn't give me much choice. I guess maybe my Paragon skill wasn't high enough. I will destroy you! Hostile contact! You me, I try. What's this? A power junction? Hmm. Oh, that must be on the other side. No? I will, however, take this easy storage decryption. gels. Oh well. Like I said before, we tried to come in peace, but didn't leave much of us. I wonder what I'm supposed to do with these power junctions. Hmm. Oh well. Worry about it later. Rifle equipped. Oh, yeah. I'll provide long range. Oh. 
Area secure. Of course, they chose to do this the hard way. They chose to do this the hard way. Well, I suppose we could, but we're not quite ready yet. Survey it, duh. You have successfully surveyed a large deposit of gold. Dang. This should be our next destination. more rock climbing. You know, it's kind of funny is that none of my crewmates are complaining. Like, Shepard, you're too drunk to drive, or... Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No. Are we there yet? No! skills too low. Wait a minute. Let me take a look at something here. Or maybe I don't have the right training. I wonder... squad would have a uh, electronics training up. Oh, he would! Oh, but I gotta wait another level. Oh. Should've guessed. Yeah, I can't undo training points here, but that's okay. Next time, we're just gonna... But that's okay. Next time, we're... Next time we level up, he's gonna be, uh... We'll, we'll come back later. destination over there. Whee! Though. 
So the Grudge Brother's gonna have to wait. Unless maybe go back the way I came. Go this way. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do that. And I'll come back later for that probe. was that probe from earlier, but I'm not going back. Debris, huh? Okay, so we're gonna have to, uh, perfect. Let's go take a look. Engaging target. The heck? What's Walk going there, Commander? No! That was close. Turian insignia recovered. Digging under the beacon revealed a piece of scrap metal, likely from a very old freighter. It was marked on one side with the Mycenaean outpost sig insignia. Oof. That was close. Wrecked mining vehicle. Ooh, there's more.
Ah, discovery. The front of the rover is crumpled in from impact. A glance inside tells you the occupants. Probably a team of illegal wildcat miners are dead. Debris is still sliding down the furrows left by its tires, silent in the near vacuum atmosphere. Okay. Well, I guess the only thing we can do now is just head back to the Normandy. For now. Yes, Commander? Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. So I wonder who I talked to about filing the report. Commander, something you need? I like to know my crew. Mind if I ask you a few questions? I can see where this is going. You did a background check on me, didn't you? Well, I'll tell you the same thing I told the captain. You want me as your pilot. I'm not good. I'm not even great. I am the best damn helmsman in the Alliance fleet. Top of my class in flight school, I earned that. All those commendations in my file, I earned every single one. Those weren't given to me as charity for my disease. What are you talking about? Are you sick? You mean... You mean you didn't know? Oh, crap. Okay, I've got Froelich syndrome, brittle bone disease. The bones in my legs never develop properly. They're basically hollow, too much force, and they'll shatter. Even with crutches and my leg braces, it's hard to get around. One wrong step and crack! It's very dramatic, but I've learned to manage my condition, Commander. Put the Normandy in my hands and I'll make her dance for you. Just don't ask me to get up and dance unless, you know, you like the sound of snapping shin bones. I need to know more about this Vrolik syndrome if I'm putting my ship in your hands. Yeah, of course you do. It's an extremely rare condition. Nobody knows exactly what causes it. Genetic, maybe. It's treatable, but there's no cure. They classify my case as moderate to severe. I was born with over a dozen fractures. Hip, thighs, ankles, my bones were already breaking in the womb. A hundred years ago, I wouldn't have survived past my first year. Lucky for me, modern medical science has turned me into a productive member of society. You're not gonna break a bone trying to fly the ship, are you? Uh, I don't fly with my feet, Commander, so I'm fine as long as I'm in this chair. I gotta be real careful when I get up to take a piss, though. I can do my job as well as anyone on the ship. Better, actually. So don't worry about it. I have to go. Alright, see ya. Hmm. Okay, so who do I report this to? Considering that... Not considering that Major Kyle couldn't be reasoned with, despite my best efforts. I gotta go to the comm room. Nope. I did get a codex though, so I guess that's for something. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out exactly, uh... I'm still trying to figure out exactly who to report this to. Unless I have to leave the area. Like I said, I'll be coming back later. Once I get Garrus' electronic skills up.
Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? How well do you know the Lieutenant? I'd never worked with him before this mission. But he has an impressive service record, over a dozen special commendations. Tends to keep to himself, though. Maybe because of the headaches. It's not easy being an L2. What does that have to do with it? Well, most biotics now use the L3 implants. Lieutenant Alenka was wired with the old L2 configuration. Sometimes there are complications. What kind of complications? Severe mental disabilities, insanity, crippling physical pain. There's a long list of horrific side effects. Caden's lucky. He just gets migraines. I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Oh, uh, more Codex stuff. Cool. Oh, it never hurts. Oh, there's more. Biotics is the ability of rare individuals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wish I had time to read all this, but I don't. Like I said, I think I have to leave the area, but we're going to be coming back. Cool. I guess it is time to leave. Do our next assignment. Message coming in. Patching it through. Admiral Hackett here, Commander. Your helmsman just forwarded your report on Major Cloud. We never like to see civilian casualties, but I think we all knew how this was going to end. You did what you had to do. The news fans are going to pick up this story for sure, but we'll keep your name out of it, Shepard. Hack it out. Oh, yeah, we're going to come back to Press Orb later. Other than that, I think we're done here. Takes care of that. Hang on a minute. Where's this other assignment at? Argos Rogue Cluster. All right. Let's go take a look there. A standard Neptune type gas giant, the upper cloud decks of its hydrogen helium atmosphere tinted a dramatic blue by traces of methane. Over a fan 162.1 Earth years, radius 45,145 kilometers, day length 12.8 Earth hours. Gas deposit surveys, gas from orbit, and detect large concentration of helium. Alright, crewmen, don't inhale this stuff because I don't want to deal with squeaky voices. They are. <laughs> Excuse me? There is a large gas with traces of chlorine and sodium in its atmosphere. It also has a significant amount of water vapor in the clouds of its upper atmosphere. There was struck by an asteroid at least 12 kilometers in diameter within the last 100 years. The superheating caused by the impactor's atmospheric passage created a large bank of vicious storms along the equilateral bend. Uh, orbital period 12.8 Earth years, radius 60,774 kilometers, day length 11.8 Earth hours. Alright. 
Bromalis has a thick atmosphere of nitrogen and helium. Its surface is scorching high, mainly with molds of alumina with deposits of borax. The planet has an extensive network of subterranean caves, one over the millennia by volcanic processes. In these relatively cool areas, some primitive life has developed. Huh, interesting. To be able to can't land. Anyways, orbital period 0.4 Earth years, radius 3,000. 593 kilometers, day length 19.4 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 1.3 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 503 degrees Celsius, surface gravity 1.2 G's. Second thought, never mind. That goes. Message coming in. Patching it through. The general distress call. The sacred angel medical transport. Critical system failure. Losing power. Emergency landing. Fargo. Communications failing. Life support, emergency transponder. Won't last. Please hurry. All right, let's go. Oh, this is a heat hazard. Oh, lovely. Methgos is a large terrestrial planet with an atmosphere of carbon dioxide and nitrogen. Its hot surface is mainly composed of nickel with deposits of potassium and heavy metals. It is a mineralogical treasure trove with concentrated heavy elements constantly being brought to the surface by volcanic activity. Metgos is inhospitable and dangerous, and expeditions must be well prepared to survive any length of time. With its high mass, heat trapping, causing constant volcanic vending, Metgos seems well on its way to becoming a Venetian pressure cooker world. Lovely. Orbital period 2.8 Earth years, radius 7,301 kilometers, day length 47.2 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 1 Earth atmosphere, surface temperature 169 degrees Celsius, and 1.1 G surface gravity. Perfect. Found another Turian insignia. While searching the wreckage, you found a very old letter stamp for the Gothis colony insignia. Unfortunately, the text is indecipherable. Cool. Alright, Huh? It's a 
this business say? Increases damage reduction by 10%, increases hardening by 10%. That's not bad. Survey. You have successfully surveyed a large deposit of thorium. Very nice. Alright, can we please hurry this up here? Because I'm about to fry. Alright, we made it. Good. It looks like the signal's coming from that wreckage. Yeah, it's a trap! You were right! You were right, Rex. It is a trap. to immediately restore your squad members to fighting state after they have been knocked out in combat. Oh, well, that's kind of handy.
right, next level. Well, that could come in handy at some point later on. So it looks like we got another one here. You lead, I'll follow. All right. So I guess it's back to the Normandy then. I guess. Yeah, there was one more thing I was going to do. Canarum. Canarum is a small rocky world with a trace of atmosphere of methane and krypton. Superman better avoid that planet then. Its surface is mainly composed of magnesium and silicates with deposits of carbon. Canarum was the site of the warlord Shagor's defeat by Turian peacekeeping forces during their program rebellions. This band was not especially powerful. Shagar was a female warlord and one of the few remaining fertile females at that. She had, through viciousness and cunning, par parlayed her unique value to a position of power. Kogan males competed for the right to join her band and lie with her. Oh, I can see how that goes. When Shagar's death was announced, vengeful male Kogan admirers near and far swore blood oaths against the participating Turian crews. In the end, several thousand of the Turian participants were killed in open combat or through assassination. To this day, many Krogan proudly proclaim that they have the blood of Shiger. Orbital period 67.3 Earth years, radius 5,220 kilometers, day length 32.5 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 107 Earth atmospheres, surface temperatures minus 132 degrees Celsius, and surface gravity of 0.55 Gs. Oh, we'll found another insignia! Scans of the planet Canarum revealed dangerous levels of radiation coming from orbit. Chief Engineer Adams conducted further scans and discovered the remains of an ancient warhead marked with the Parthian colony insignia. Ooh, interesting. Let's go back to Medicos here and re-land. Alright, let's see if I can get Garrus up. Garrus this time. And if not, not a big deal. I can come back later. Alright, so we're gonna start leveling up his electronics. Of course, I need seven. Well. Alright, so, with that, let's go back to the debris. Oh, the transponders are going missed. Oh. Let's go take a look. Oh, it's not too far. Oh, 
I guess we weren't done here. Okay. Whoopsies. Sorry, crew. All right, Shepard, you're too drunk to drive. Yeah, Shepard. All right, there it goes. I think one of the crewmen's like, all right, uh, Captain or Commander, you're too drunk to drive. Uh, I'm taking over. Well, it's not my fault. The surface is uneven. No, Commander. Your balance is on. Ooh. Area map. Oh, wait a minute. Who's this here? Unless there's more. I can't say. Hmm. Vehicle mine? Oh, that's probably what happened. Okay. Maybe we gotta go back to here. Now that I got his electronics up easy, maybe, just maybe, we can actually decrypt this thing. If not, it's gonna have to wait another couple levels. And he's the only one who can level up. here, maybe, just maybe, this might make a difference. If not, we're going back to the Normandy. Okay, so maybe not this one. Yeah, we can come back later. It's not that big of a deal. And there's also that other place, too. Gonna be our last trip through this area. Medal of Exploration Two. I actually I hate to break it to you, but uh, I only landed on two Uncharted worlds. Not four. I hate to break it to you, but I'll take the achievement, I guess. I suppose. Oh, that reminds me. Oh, he's got to get leveled up real bad. Oh. Well, you know what? Hmm. That gave me an even better idea. That gave me, an even, like I said, this gave me an even better idea. Hmm. I have five, so... So I guess I'm gonna be bringing him with for a while. Of course, I never hurt anyone. No offense, Garrus, but, uh... Well, with him around, he might be more of use. So after this, we're going back to the planet one last time. I promise, it's gonna be the last time. Hmm. 
is something up there. This cluster of three five utility tracks have distinct ready to check along them. A set of rover tracks leading the way over the mountain ridge to the southwest. Let's have a look around. Not exactly where I'm at. At least we made another discovery, so I guess. I guess we'll call that one even, I guess? I suppose. Anyways, let's keep moving. Alright, let's keep moving. I'm only about the shack absorbers in this vehicle are out of this world. Alright, so we're back here. Again, for the trillionth time. Perfect. Oh, it's just for a bunch of, uh... Well, I suppose you never know. Alright, back to the Normandy. I think that's everything for now.
Perfect. That's kind of interesting is that uh, she can equip better armor than I can. Perfect. All right, let's get out of here. We're done. So this is gonna be our next destination, the Artemis Tau Cluster. But first things first. I got stuff to buy. I have a ton of money here. Krogan lived for centuries. Don't tell me you haven't had a few interesting adventures. Well, there was this one time the Turians almost wiped out our entire race. That was fun. I heard about that. You know, they almost did the same to us. It's not the same. It seems pretty much the same to me. So your people were infected with a genetic mutation? An infection that makes only a few in a thousand children survive birth? And I suppose it's destroying your entire species? I suppose it isn't all the same. I don't expect you to understand, but don't compare humanity's fate with the Krogan. Sorry, Rex. I wasn't trying to get you upset. Your ignorance doesn't upset me, Shepard. As for the Krogan, 
I gave up on them long ago. The genophage infected us, but it's not what's killing us. What can you tell me about the genophage? Ask the Solarians if you want details. They made it. All I know, it makes breeding nearly impossible. Thousands die in stillbirth, and most never get that far. Every Krogan is infected, every one. And no one's rushing to find a cure. Why don't the Krogan try to find a cure? When was the last time you saw a Krogan scientist? You ask a Krogan, would he rather find a cure for the genophage or fight for credits? He'll choose fighting every time. It's just who we are, Shepard. I can't change that. Nobody can. So long, Rex. Shepard. Oh, looks like I got a little more knowledge here. For the Krogan. Interesting. Commander, nice work out there. I knew working with the Spectre would be better than life at CSEC. Have you worked with a Spectre before? Well, no, but I know what they're like. Spectres make their own rules. You're free to handle things your way. At CSEC, you're buried by rules. The damn bureaucrats are always on your back. Being a Spectre does have its advantages. Exactly my point. If I'm trying to take down a suspect, it shouldn't matter how I do it, as long as I do it. But CSEC wants it done their way. Protocol and procedure come first. That's why I left. So you just quit because you didn't like the way they do things? There's more to it than that. It didn't start out bad, but as I rose in ranks, I got saddled with more and more red tape. CSEC's handling of Saren was typical. I just couldn't take it anymore. I hate people. I hope you made the right choice. I'd hate for you to regret it later. Well, that's sort of why I teamed up with you. It's a chance for me to get off the Citadel, see how things are done outside CSEC. Either way, I plan to make the most of this. And without CSEC headquarters looking over my shoulder, well, maybe I can get the job done my way for a change. As long as you do your job well, you're free to go about your business as you see fit. Thank you, Commander. Huh, no new knowledge here. Looking for supplies? <laughs> Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. All right, so. Jeez. 313,000. Dang. A lot of this stuff is expensive. Uh, don't you have anything more, a little more worthwhile? Tally, she's been spending all her time down here asking me about our engines. I'll tell her to leave you alone. What? No, she's amazing. I wish my guys were half as smart as she is. Give her a month on board and she'll know more about our engines than I do. She's got a real knack for technology, that one. I can see why you wanted her to come along. I figured she'd be a real asset to the team. You've got an eye for Tally, Commander. But I'm guessing that's not why you came down here. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, Commander. Your ship's amazing, Shepard. I've never seen a drive core like this before. I can't believe you were able to fit it into a ship this small. I'm starting to understand why you humans have been so successful. I had no idea Alliance vessels were so advanced. The Normandy's a prototype. Cutting-edge technology. 
A month ago, I was patching a makeshift fuel line into a converted tugship in the flotilla. Now, I'm sitting on board one of the most advanced vessels in Citadel space. I have to thank you again for bringing me along. Traveling on a vessel like this is a dream come true for me. I had no idea you found ship technology so interesting. It comes with being a Quarian. The migrant fleet is the key to the survival of my people. Ships are our most valuable resource. But we don't have anything like this. We make do with cast-offs and second-hand equipment. We just try to keep them running for as long as we can. Some of the fleet's larger vessels date all the way back to our original flight from the Geth. I can't believe your fleet's still using ships that are three centuries old. They're constantly being repaired, modified, and refitted. They aren't pretty, but they work, mostly. We've tried to make ourselves as independent as possible on the flotilla. Grow our own food, mine, and process our own fuel. But some things we just can't make on our own. A patch to maintain the hull integrity requires raw materials we just don't have. That's why our pilgrimages are so important. I want to know more about the pilgrimage. When my people reach maturity, we leave our birth ships and seek acceptance with a new crew. It's necessary to maintain genetic diversity among the fleet. But no ship wants to accept someone who will be a burden on them. So, to prove our worth, we embark on a pilgrimage. We set out alone, leaving the flotilla and our families behind us. I think I've heard this us. before. We only return once we have found something of value we can bring back to the fleet. This is presented as a gift to the captain of the respective ship we wish to join. If the gift is accepted, we are welcomed into the crew. Can a captain choose to reject the gift? That doesn't happen often. Most captains are eager to increase the size of their crew. It increases their own standing in our society. Even when a gift is not particularly valuable, the captain usually accepts it out of a sense of tradition. However, there is a stigma to presenting a substandard gift. It's not the best way to make a good impression on a new community. Most pilgrims don't return until they find something worthwhile. I can't believe they just send you off alone. It's not like they just cast us out. Before we leave, we are given lessons in how to survive outside the flotilla, and given gifts to help us on our journey. We also receive implants to fight off sickness and disease. Generations of living in an isolated and highly controlled environment have left our immune systems weaker than most. By the time we leave the fleet, we are well equipped for the pilgrimage. This is a rite of passage for all Quarians. If it were dangerous, our numbers would suffer. Virtually every pilgrimage ends with a triumphant return and the ritual presentation of the gift to one of the fleet's captains. I want to talk about something else. Like what? I should go. See you later. Oh, looks like I've got another, looks like I another set of uh, codexes. And I think as time moves on, uh, we're going to learn more. Hopefully, if we're lucky, there might be an achievement behind this. Commander, you have a minute to talk. I keep an open door policy. If you have any concerns, lay them on me. All right. I know things are different aboard the Normandy, but uh, I'm I'm concerned about the aliens, Vicarian and Rex. With all due respect, Commander, should they have full access to the ship? Don't mince words, Chief. What's your concern? This is the most advanced ship in the Alliance Navy. I don't think we should give them free reign to poke around the vital systems. Engines, sensors, weapons. You don't trust the Alliance's allies? I'm not sure I'd call the Council races allies. We, humanity, I mean, have to learn to rely on ourselves. Standing up for ourselves doesn't mean standing alone. I don't think we should turn down allies. I just think we shouldn't bet everything on them staying allies. As noble as the council members seem now, if their backs are against the wall, they'll abandon us. 
I don't see that as inevitable. Look, if you're fighting a bear and the only way for you to survive is to sick your dog on it and run, you'll do it. As much as you love your dog, it isn't human. It's not racism, not really. Members of their species will always be more important to them than humans are. These seem like deeply held beliefs, Williams. What made you think this way? My family's defended the Alliance since it was founded. My father, grandfather, great-grandmother, they all picked up a rifle and swore the oath of service. I guess we just tend to think of Earth centrists as our own. It doesn't sound like you've worked with aliens before. No, sir. Mainly I've been groundside, part of the service garrison forces. I did get a rotation on a space station for training. Every Marine a rifleman, every rifleman ZG certified. That's odd. Your record is spotless and your technical scores are exemplary. You should be serving with the fleet. Anyway, that's why I haven't served with many aliens, Commander. I come from a military family too. My parents were both Navy. Anybody in your family we might know? Couldn't say, Commander. We probably have a lot in common. You join up to carry on the tradition? Mainly, I wanted to serve. Protect the Alliance, save lives, you know. Glad to hear it. I'd hate to think you were out here for a free college education. All right. I can see where your concerns are coming from, Williams. But this is a multilateral mission. You're going to have to work with aliens, like it or not. It won't be a problem, Commander. You say jump, I say how high. You tell me to kiss a Turian, I'll ask which cheek. I don't think kissing Turians will be necessary. You never know, Commander. What's your opinion on the last mission? Kinda wish you'd got there sooner, Commander. No offense, I appreciate the rescue. I just wish... You wish we'd been able to save the rest of your unit? Yes, sir. If I had been more alert, we wouldn't have been cut down by an ambush. The Geth are perfect ambushers. They don't move, they don't make noise, they don't even breathe. Sir, they have flashlight heads. I'll make sure it doesn't happen again. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, sir. Hmm. I was kind of hoping I'd learn a little more about her, but... Eh. It is what it is. Alright. With that, let's go to our next destination. place to explore. Oh, we found it. Alright, level one pressure hazard. Sargila has a very dense atmosphere of ammonia and oxygen. Its temperate surface is mainly composed of alumina with deposits of sulfur. Convoys in the system have recently logged a number of unregistered vessels operating nearby. Sargila has an extensive silicon-based oxygen breathing ecology. Heavily populated areas are covered with fine silica, silicon dioxide dust, respiratory byproduct of the world's higher animal forms. High-speed surface winds often land with the obstructive silica dust present a hazard. In areas where the wind deposits a great deal of silica, wooding can be treacherous. Avas are discouraged. Orbital period 1 Earth year, radius 5,693 kilometers, day length 40.6 Earth hours, atmospheric pressure 90, or 39.16 Earth atmospheres, surface temperature 25 degrees Celsius, and surface gravity of 0.9 G. gonna I think we're gonna stop it here for right now um 
Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see everyone next time.